Hi, we're in packet 4.1, classifying and solving for sides or angles in triangles. Um, this is all part of unit four on congruent triangles. Okay, so we're trying to determine ultimately that two triangles are identical, they're congruent. The questions here for us today are, what types of triangles can I create by changing the angle measures and side lengths of a triangle? So basically we're gonna classify different types of triangles based on their angle measure and their side lengths. What is true about the angles within a triangle? We've heard of that before. How do those three angles relate to each other? What can we tell about their sum? What are some special properties of isosceles and equilateral triangles? So here we're kind of going over general properties of triangles before we get into how to determine whether triangles are congruent. So I've added um, some important terms here. We're going to go over in the packet. So acute triangles, obtuse triangles, right triangles, equilateral triangles. Again, we're giving them names based on their properties so that we can identify them uh, later on. And then in the packet on the bottom over here, you have the triangle angle sum theorem, right? We know that those angles, they add up to 180 degrees. On the next page, we have the exterior angle theorem. We'll go over that. The isosceles triangle theorem, the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem, right? The original conditional if P then Q, its converse is if Q then P, right? And then we have uh, information about equilateral and equiangular triangles. Equi means the same equilateral, the same sides, equiangular, the same angles, okay? So let's get started over here. We're going to start with classifying triangles, right? So we see the first triangle over here. It has three acute angles, and that means that those angles are cute. They're small, okay? So they're less than 90 degrees, okay? So if three of them are not less than 90 degrees, we call it a, an acute triangle. So acute triangle. Okay, now obtuse triangle has an obtuse angle, which is an angle which is larger than 90 degrees. It can't have three angles larger than 90 degrees, obviously, because that would add up to more than 180. But it has one which is larger than 90 degrees, so we call that an obtuse triangle. Okay, a right triangle has one angle, which is 90 degrees, indicated with that box over there. So that's called a right triangle. And here we have three congruent angles. So three congruent angles is called equa angular, equiangular, right? This is an equiangular. You've heard of equilateral. What well, equiangular just means the, the angles have the same measure. Use the diagram and classify each triangle by its angles. So we have triangle CDE, C, uh, sorry, C, D, E over here. And we notice that one of the angles over here is a right angle. So we're going to classify it as a right triangle. Then we go B, C, E, B, C, E, this one over here, B, C, E, and we notice that one of the angles over here is greater than 90 degrees, and if that is so, it's called an obtuse. So this is an obtuse triangle. I'll do one more with you here. Let's try uh, triangle A, B, E, so A, B, E. You can see that each one of those angles is identical, it's indicated by the markings over here, so that's equiangular, Equa angular and equiangular triangle. Okay, so let's go down. We've classified them by angle. Let's classify them by sides now. Okay, so what if they have three congruent sides? How would we call them? You've heard about that before, I'm sure. We call that an equilateral triangle. Equilateral triangle. What if they have two congruent sides? So just two are the same and not the third. Well, that's an isosceles triangle. I-S-O-S-C-E-L-E-S. -E -E it's kind of a weird spelling. Isosceles triangle. Okay. And what if they have no congruent sides? That means the side lengths are all different. Then it's called a scalene triangle. Okay. So again, we've identified three different types of triangle based on their side lengths now and not their angles. So here we go. Using the diagram, classify each triangle by its sides. So if we have triangle JKM, so J k m over here this outer triangle basically over here so we're going to look at their sides and try and, and try and identify what kind of triangle it is so is this side the same length as this side well the answer is no because clearly this is the same length as this and i've added some two here so these two are not the same length what about this length and this length are they the same no this length and this length are they the same no therefore it is a scalene triangle all right i'll leave the other two for you Let's go to question nine over here on the bottom. Classify each triangle by its angles and sides. So let's start with the angles over here. I see there's a right angle, so I'm gonna call it right. It's a right triangle. 
And I look at the size and I see two of the sides are the same. So it's an isosceles, I-S-O-S-C-E-L-E-S, -E -E isosceles triangle. So it's an right, a right isosceles triangle. Then we look over here. And the first thing I, I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the um, angles. And I see that the angles are all the same. So it's an equiangular triangle. And I see that the side lengths are also all the same. So it's equilateral as well. Equilateral. Moving on to question 13. Right away, I see that one of the angles is right. So I'm back to right triangle over here. And what do I know about the sides? The sides, don't, the, the, I don't have any markings that indicate that the sides are, are of equal length. So I have to assume they aren't, right? If there are no markings, I assume that they're not of equal length. Therefore, they're scaling. Okay, moving on to the next page. If line segment PR bisects angle SRT, so we have line segment PR, bisects SRT. Immediately, I run over here and I'm going to put my markings down, right? I always want to draw my diagram so I understand what's going on. So line segment PR bisects angle SRT divides into two equal parts. And U is the midpoint of RT. So U over here is the midpoint of RT, right? It's the midpoint. So this length is the same as this length. Well, I've already given this a tick mark. So I have to use the same tick mark over here, OK? Classify each triangle by its angles and sides. Here we go. U, Q, R. So I have U, U, Q, excuse me, R. U, Q, R. I see right away that these two are the same. So if I classify by its size, this is isosceles. And I see that this angle over here is 120 is greater than 90. So it's obtuse. So here we go. We're going to write down obtuse and I-S-O-S-C-E-L-E-S. -E -E obtuse and isosceles triangle. Then we're moving on to question 17. So we have triangle SRQ, SRQ over here. I'm going to look at the angles first. I notice that one of them is right. So it's going to be a right. A triangle and then I look at the sides over here do I know that any one of those sides is identical is the same the answer is no I don't there are no markings to indicate that any one of those sides are the same so I'm going to write down right and I'm going to write down scalene and then I have triangle TQU so TQU is over here T Q U T Q U well I just saw that these two sides they have the same marking see that so they must be the same length. But I don't know about this one over here. Okay. Now I do know that this one is 60 degrees over here, right? So this one, since it's opposite, I guess we're going to learn that soon. This one is also going to be 60 degrees. Well, if this is 60, this is 60, and this is 60, right? Then I have an equiangular triangle. And I know that this is 60, by the way. Why? Because these two angles over here form a linear pair. They add up to 180 degrees. So I can write down 60 over here. OK, so this angle and this angle is the same over here. I know that for a fact. And I know that all the angles add up to 180 in a triangle. So this has to be 60 as well. So I see right away, oh, all the angles are the same, right? And so if all the angles are the same, let's look at the sides over here. So this one has side length 8. I know that this length is the same as this length. And this is 8 over here. So this must be 8 as well. But I know it's the same as here. So that must be it as well. So I see that it's equiangular and it's equilateral. Equiangular and equilateral. Awesome. Okay, let's go down and let's start using the coordinate plane now. Okay, use the coordinate plane so we can identify a point using the X and the Y uh, coordinate of each point. It says, find the measures of the sides of triangle JKL then classified by its sides. So I have to find the measure of the sides, right, in a coordinate plane. So to do that, right, if I have a point, I'm just going to sketch it over here. If I have two points, let's say over here, right, and I want to know what is the distance, right, what is the measure of this side? If I draw a line connecting those two points, how do I find the measure of that side in a coordinate plane? Well, if I give this one coordinate x1, y1, and this says coordinates x2, y2, but what I do is I create this triangle, this right triangle over here. And I say, well, what is the distance here? Well, the length here, using the Pythagorean theorem, if this is a and this is b, this is the square root of a squared plus b squared. Okay, so if the length here is a, that's b, this is c. I know that c squared is 
a squared plus b squared by the Pythagorean theorem. That's basically what we're using. We're using the distance formula. So I know that c is the square root of a squared plus b squared. So what is this distance a over here? It's simply the x2 coordinate minus the x1 coordinate. What's this distance b here? It's the y2 coordinate minus the y1 coordinate. So that's what we're using. That is the distance formula. Every single time we're going to use that distance formula. So let's see over here, what is the distance between J and K? How long is that side length? I need to know that because it says classify them by their sides. I need to know how long those sides are with relation to each other, right? So I say the distance is the square root of JK. So we have X2 minus X1, X2 minus X1. Now I could do negative seven minus negative nine is plus nine squared. Right, x2 minus x1, and then plus y2 minus y1, which is negative 7 minus 1, negative 7 minus 1 squared. Right, this is what I'm trying to figure out. Okay, You have to set up that properly to get the answer correctly. So I use these two points, and I subtract the x-coordinates, then I subtract the y-coordinates. So you may say, well, wait a sec. With this, why don't you call k the second point? Does that matter? The answer is it doesn't matter because I'm squaring the result. When you square something, it's automatically positive. It didn't matter whether I did negative 9 minus negative 7 squared or negative 7 minus negative 9 squared. I would get the same result. You can try that for yourself. Okay? So if you simplify this, you'll get the square root of 68. Right? And we can, we can simplify that further. Let's see. Uh, 68 divided by 2 is 34. 34 divided by 2 is 17. I can take two twos out of there. So I get 2 square root of 17. Okay? Let's go on to the next one. We have KL over here, KL. Now KL, again, I have two points and it doesn't matter which order I take it in. So I'm gonna take the distance is the square root of negative nine plus one squared plus one plus one squared. And that is the square root of 68, which is two square root of 17. And then finally JL. So these two points over here, what's the distance between them? The distance is, and again, the order doesn't matter, it's negative 7 plus 1 squared plus negative 7 plus 1 squared. It's the square root of 72. So if we simplify that, that's 2 times 36, which is 2 times 18. Got two twos over there. 18 is 2 times 9. 9 is 3 times 3. So I'm taking out a 3 and a 2, that's 6, square root of 2. Okay, I just did that quickly in my mind. You can go over that yourself. See if you get the same answer when you simplify, okay? But I see that these two over here are the same. The third one is not the same. So if I class them by them by their sides, I have two sides which are the same, and that is known as an isosceles triangle. Okay, awesome. Okay, let's see if we can get, do 23 quickly. We don't have much time, but it's the same principle. So we're gonna do the distance between J and K. Distance is square root of 1 minus 3 squared plus negative 13 minus 3 squared is the square root of 260. Uh, KL distance is 3 minus 10 squared plus 3 plus 6 squared is the square root of 130. And JL, the distance from J to L, is the square root of 1 minus 10 squared plus negative 13 plus 6 squared equals the square root of 130. Again, we see the two of them are the same, so it's going to be isosceles. Let's see if we can simplify this, right? This is, um, I can divide it by 2, I get 130, right? This is twice that length. Um, then 130 divided by 2 is 65. So I took two twos out. I'm left with 65. 65 I can divide by 5. I get 13. Right? So it's 5 times 13. So this is basically 2 times the square root of 65. Okay? And this one is 65. Um, did I do that right? Yeah, that looks right. And so this is 2 times 65, which is 2 times 5 times 13. None of them repeat, so we have to leave it. Okay, guys, thank you very much.